Hello guys, today I thought it would be nice even for me to film a February favourites as I did a January favourites I think it's always nice to look back on the things that made you happy for a while and that you loved at some point quick disclaimer, obviously I'm still using and loving the things I showed you in my other video for January so that's why for today's video I've chosen other things that I have either discovered or rediscovered I did not want to be redundant for you guys that's why I've chosen some new things for you to see and discover let's begin with fashion I'd say the first thing I wanted to mention I showed these pants in my declutter uh, video they are these Uniqlo cargo pants they are black I believe or dark grey yeah so these are cargo pants they're very wide at the bottom the wide leg and they go to the floor they fall on the floor which is nice and I like that I'm not keen on you know the length that goes to your ankles it does not suit me I think it's not my particular style and because I'm wearing most of the time shoes that have a thick sole is that the word not sure like a platform of some sort wearing long length long length pants is not a problem for me and I love long trousers for my silhouette so yeah as I said in my declutter video you may know that I try to be a conscious consumer and I mostly buy on vintage or in thrift stores when it comes to fashion, when it comes to clothing. But that one indeed comes from the shop Uniqlo and I wanted to try it um, before buying it, if it makes sense to you. Obviously you can find cargo pants on vintage, but when it comes to um, trousers and pants and jeans it's quite tedious and hard to get your hands on the proper sizing for you even if you you are let's say a 40 if you look for a 40 and vintage sometimes it doesn't um it's not the same sizing and it does not look it looks quite uncanny on your on your figure don't know what what uh, to explain that so yeah i wanted to feel that these pants before buying them. I tried them on in Uniqlo in my town and I bought them. They were quite expensive because obviously they were brand new and in the shop. But for the future, I already know now that these pants fit me well and that I have to get a size S36 because they're quite oversized and they even, they're even loose on my waist. But I'm I don't mind and I usually don't wear a belt because I love the loose look and I love that it can be like a low waist or a high waist if I want to. So yeah, and obviously my belly is not showing because I'm wearing most of the time um, tops that are long enough to cover my belly. I won't feel comfortable showing my belly to any anyone in the street or everyone very comfortable to be honest I've worn them twice a week minimum because I love them obviously I wash them I'm not that dirty they're very comfortable to walk around and because they are black I feel that it's quite easy to pair with another top yeah they're, they're very nice now that I've worn them once or several times even it's reassuring um, for me to know that I can uh, go and vintage and find the same ones in another sh color, I know that they will fit me. Another clothing piece is just behind on the chair. Show you. So it's a winter coat that has full fur inside, and I bought it on vintage one or two months ago. It was from 
pull in there and it looks quite big for me but I love this I love this oversized style it's quite long it falls to my thighs it's um, very warming it's uh, very comfortable to wear and there was nothing unusual about it it was almost brand new when I bought it on Vinted apart from the button that is quite broken but I don't mind it because I don't button up this coat when I wear it yeah so I love that it's burgundy now in the accessories category I could talk about that pendant necklace that has a black onyx stone in it on it I got that in a jewel candle from the brand My Jolie Candle. I've been layering it with other necklaces. Uh, today is this combination, but I often change with other necklaces. This one often stays on every day and it's been a continuity in my jewelry choice each day, every day. Another accessory would be this pair of earrings, let me show you how they look from up close. They are golden. And I don't know if you can see well, sorry for my disgusting nails. I'm not allowed to get nails um, as I work in a bakery part time. It's not hygienic, so I have to wear to get used to my natural nails. That looks, that look, that look disgusting. They are different coloured stones on it it's very tiny they're nice i bought them in a in a tiny shop in my town i can't remember the brand of them but it was a french brand it was around 50 euros for the pair of earrings i'm sure that you can find similar earrings somewhere on the net or somewhere today i've chosen to wear them on both ears but on some days i enjoy mismatching my earrings um so for instance i would wear one on one ear and on the other ear i can choose another earring that i have today yeah, I'm, I'm looking quite symmetrical but even for these ones sometimes i choose to wear one big hoop and choose another type of earring on the other ear. Now when it comes to makeup, there are two things that I have particularly enjoyed using. Um, the first thing is this Beauty Bay palette. It's the bright one. And oh, as you can see, it's the one that has all the colors that you can possibly use. It goes from the white to the black and you have all the colors of the rainbow on it as you might know i've recently tried to be more daring with my eye colors my eye palettes and what i like about that is that there are neutrals like this brown shade and it's well organized what i like doing is using the same row for one makeup look. For instance, what I sometimes do is take a matte shade and uh, put it in the outer corner of the lid. And on the inner lid and the inner pot, I choose a shimmer from the same row. And yeah, that's a look. It's very simple, very nice. And it encourages you to go for colours and to feel more confident with your makeup looks. The only row that I've not used that much is the bottom one with the purple with the purples. For the moment I don't feel like purple goes well with my eye colour. I know it's quite it's quite of a bad uh, thought and we shouldn't care about all our eye colour coordination with shadows. I don't know why I don't know how to work with purples for the moment or even greens. It's been hard with greens. Otherwise all the other colours I'm using well I think. But yeah for the moment purples and greens are not my 
um, go-tos. Obviously what you can also do is um, choose only one mat and put it all across your lid or choose a shimmer and again uh, swipe it all across your lid. Another makeup product that I've liked using this month has been this long-lasting liquid lipstick from Wycon Cosmetics. It was not that expensive. I bought it in Italy when I did my solo trip in 2022. One kind lady recommended me that shade because I said that I wanted to find a pink nude shade. Not very good at describing lip shades. It stays on, on your lips for a couple of hours but to be honest, you you have to do a touch up if you eat or drink something. It's the shade I'm wearing today. It does not feel tacky on your lips. It's uh, comfortable. It looks pinker that in, than it looks in real life, in the camera. It's not that good, but it's good. It was made in Italy, so that's even better. When it comes to my hobbies, um, there are many things that can fit in that category. The first one being this camera. You might know what it is. It's a Fujifilm. I have the box on my right side. Fujifilm Instant Camera Instax Wide 300. They were very famous at some point a couple of years ago, but you know, there's smaller versions of that camera that um, prints like uh, squares, squared pictures. I'll just add some background for you guys. When I was a kid, my grandma had a disposable camera. I think they're called like that in English. And she carried that around with her and she got many pictures of my brother and I and my father and stuff. And now I have like albums that the word in English. Yeah, I have a couple of albums with nice pictures of where we were younger and it's uh, something that I love looking at. I'm a very nostalgic person when it comes to my young years when I was a kid and a toddler and I have a very bad memory so I don't know why but I've my memory has erased many moments from my let's say between my kindergarten years to my high school years i've forgotten most of the things that happened perhaps because of the bullying i went through it was not hardcore bullying bullying but it still was hard to endure when you are a young human being or even when you are an adult an adult it's hard to endure and to go through i've always had a particular relationship with paper camp paper photos and uh, nowadays we use our phones to take pictures so that's great but you don't have that feeling of um instance of yeah you have you don't have that natural feeling that much and yeah i wanted to create that with a disposable camera but they're quite expensive and you have to throw them once they or empty. I made some research and I bought that reusable camera that does Polaroid, 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 and they're quite large. They're not too small compared to the other Instax that were famous. For instance, that my that's my dad. You can see that the pictures are quite big, not too small, and you can zoom with that one. I can. You have a flash option, you have a light and dark option, so when it's darker uh, it can actually make your picture look brighter. Yeah, it's a nice camera and I got that particularly for a special occasion, which was the birth of my niece. I printed a couple of pictures already um, of the first day that I met my niece, she was one one week old. I feel like with your pictures on your phone you forget to look at them and all the pictures that you have on your phone tend to drawn is that word 
to be drowning uh, in between all of the pictures that you have. It's nice to sometimes have the, pa the paper version to look at, even if it's uh, now easy to print your pictures from your phone with uh, special services on special websites. I don't know what I don't know about you guys, but it's not something that I do quite often. I tend to forget to do that. Even if the papers are quite expensive, I don't get that camera out often. I use that for special moments with my family or with friends, for moments when I feel like there's something special to capture. And there's even a tool that you can use for doing selfies, so it's very nice. Another hobby in February has been playing to my PlayStation 4. I have put aside gaming for a while in the past months, but my boyfriend bought me this Resident Evil game, the remake of the fourth game. I already know what happens because I've been obsessed with Jacksepticeye's Let's Plays when the game came out. I watched all of the episodes he posted and I even rewatched them afterwards. And I've I've never been very good at playing horror games and they, they, they scare me, yeah, to be honest. I'm more of a open world girly. I enjoy playing to the Batman Arkham games, to Uncharted, to The Witcher 3 or Fallout 4, but I've never been um, a huge fan of horror games because I'm easily scared. However, I knew that I liked the story of that one and it was quite a challenge to start that game, but sometimes it's quite stressful as well and nerve-wracking. I made progress, I'm not at the end, I'm at the moment when you have to open the, um, you have to turn the wheels and fight guys at the same time in the castle. I'd say that I'm in the middle of the game, I think. As a pastime, I've also loved playing to Archero on my phone. It's uh, yeah, a game that you get on your phone. And actually it's a phone game that I discovered three or four years ago when I had my Samsung back then. But when I got my iPhone two or three years ago, I redownloaded that game. I played the game daily. And there were some periods when I forgot that game, but I've always came back to it. And yeah, I have quite a high level in that game. I'm still using it very much. Another app that I've been using has been the Weeglo app. It's the it's a fitness app that was founded by Stephanie Williams. She is a content creator that is known for fitness content. Obviously, it's uh, not free. You have to pay a subscription for it, but it's still not as expensive as having a gym sub subscription. So this is what I've been uh, using the past month and I've been doing workouts regularly, like four times a week, approximately. And it's well organized. Uh, there are categories. You can uh, filter your research to find the workout that you want. I could also talk about my rediscovery of Mia, Mia Maple's channel on YouTube. She's always been a girl that I've loved watching. I began watching her channel uh, when she was in her golden era. I mean, she's still in, in her golden era, but at some point her channel grew a lot when she posted, you know, this, this video in which she tried um, outfit clothing from Shein from and dresses and stuff. Ever since I've been watching her videos regularly, I mean, not all, not all of her videos, but I watch most of what she posts. Yeah, in February, I have fallen in the Mia Maples trap again, and I've even rewatched 
ancient videos that she posted with her mom or with her brother and I like what she's been doing recently it's still uh, content that I love watching now in the hair category I could talk about this hairstyle I'm gonna put a picture right here um, so this is you know the ponytail that has different sections in it it's the only way I could describe it I've always been the basic girl that never does any hairstyle to her hair and I've always been really bad at doing hairstyles ponytails don't look good on me I think but a couple of months ago I have come across that hairstyle on Pinterest or on Instagram or on TikTok not I don't I can't remember where it made me realize that it could be easy to do so I've been doing that on the days when I need to wash my hair like on the third day when my hair is starting to feel a bit greasy I do that ponytail I, I divide that ponytail in different sections and they'll not make me look like an egg or look stupid it's a nice twist it's very easy to do last but not least I wanted to talk about another accessory but this time for my phone um this is the famous sunny angel but you know the ones that you can stick on your phone case or your computers this is the rabbit one and i actually glued them on with a very strong glue like you know the furniture glue because otherwise he it kept falling out of the case this is the case i use for my phone but my phone is now on the tripod and i had to take the case off otherwise it's not holding the tripod thingy i especially went on aliexpress to buy the rabbit like we could we can choose the um, sunny angel we want it's a bit more expensive than getting the blind boxes but i knew for sure that i only wanted the rabbit so that's it for this month's favorites i hope that you've been entertained and that you've discovered things obviously again i'm still using the things i have mentioned in my january favorites it's a continuity i'm not letting aside the things that i've mentioned before in my past videos i wish you a great month and i hope that you have resourceful times with yourself or with friends or relatives and i'll see you in a future video goodbye